Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I got a viewer question here. Why don't more creators from the past actually keep writing comics? I mean, there's nothing, at least for writers, that is really preventing them from still writing. I mean, it's, there's an argument that as uh, artists get older, uh, you know, there's kind of issues with the hand, arthritis, sight problems come in. Uh, it's one of the reasons why George Perez uh, does less than, of course, he used to. Um, and it's... It, it, you know, it's a good question. Why, why don't they? So for writers, though, yeah, with writers, you, you don't have to have an, a retirement for those reasons. You could, in theory, go longer. And many do. There are, are writers. So why don't they go? Uh, why don't they go longer? Um, the, the simple answer is kind of a disheartening one. A lot of it is that the people who are making the choices, because this is a freelance driven you know, industry, it's not done by staff, it's not done by tenure. So it's done through freelancers, and the people picking the freelancers are often younger in their career. They are, they, and they're just younger, period. Uh, they tend to have less of an, an, a knowledge. I'm, I'm always like, it, it's not, I don't think this is unreasonable, but it always makes me cringe every time I see it. I, I see an editor saying something like, you know, I, I finally went back and picked up that Secret Wars thing. What a crazy, what an amazing comic. I, I never read it before. And I'm like, how? How in the world are you an editor for uh, you know a big major comic company and you've never read Secret Wars? How can that even be? I guess in part, and, and this is where I, I want to ask you, so the, we'll, we'll ask an earlier question for the comments, um, but I don't find it hard to get my hands on comics uh, through legal means, by the way, let alone through piracy. Um, there's, there's these, uh, you know, you've got digital apps for Marvel and DC with tons of back catalog. They're there. Uh, it is not hard if you, I mean, maybe this is just because I had a comic shop and had my, had plenty of access and I've been doing it for a long time. Maybe I've got this all wrong, but I think generally, if you want to read a story, you could do it. And, and again, if you open up the door to, you know, basically like, uh, you know, read comics online or some of these scan sites, like that, anything you want is fairly easy to find. So to me, I think the barrier is not, you know, or can you locate the comic? It's, you know, do you bother to, to locate the comic? So I always find that kind of crazy. But generally, the editors who are making the decisions of who to hire tend to be younger, tend to hire people that they know from either kind of a friend circle or a network or a comic shop they hung out with. And they tend to not, you know, they're, they're not rewarded for a lot of success, meaning you know, if you're an editor and your primary way you're going to be rated is if you're able to kind of hit things on time and meet a budget, uh, putting up with a more, I don't know, not, not to say difficult, but maybe more picky writer. Like if you go and do something with Frank Miller, if you're going to have a hard time to shout at Frank Miller to get his pages in on Thursday. And if, if Thursday comes and he hasn't done it yet, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to pick up the phone and ball out Frank Miller. You're probably not, he's not going to take it. And he's not going to listen to you, and he has other options. So he's he's willing to just you know he'll do his own thing. Um, I by the way I, I you know I'm not accusing a lot of these uh, these classic creators, many of which are absolutely you know wonderful about meeting a deadline and, and everything else. And I I've heard nothing about Frank Miller missing deadlines. Just to be clear, I'm just using it as an example. If somebody has more of a name and more experience, then they tend to also uh, you know pick their own schedule in some cases, and they may not meet the schedule of the person you're paying, you know, $60 a page to that you're able to just call up on the phone and berate. That's why a lot of hiring takes place. Um, it's also a reason why you see that a lot of writers don't stick around for very long. I mean, it, it's funny to me, it's like time capsule. Every now and then, um, I'll be listening to something and then YouTube will just pick another video. It'll pick something from like 2000, like 17, 2018. And man, people were pissed off about uh, Cena Grace and Gabby Rivera and Mags and, uh, you know, who else? Max Bemis, uh, Audrey Sitterson, I'm trying to think of some of the Chuck Winding. People who, um, by and large, most of those people I just mentioned are not doing anything in comics now. Or if they are, it's, it's on the indie circuit or through their own kind of Patreon. Like nobody cares about these names anymore. It's, it's just funny to hear all that. It, and it's funny because, well, by the way, it says a separate story. Uh, a friend is, is mailing me and saying something along like, do you, do you, don't you find that a lot of these uh, YouTube uh, YouTubers right now on geek sites 
are uh, doing videos about Gabby. Isn't that kind of ghoulish? And I, my first thought was, uh, oh, is Gabby Rivera back? God, I, 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 I go to like Newsarama. I'm like, I'm, I'm expecting to see a story like Gabby Rivera announced new writer of Justice League. And it's like, no, nothing there. What, what is, what are you talking about, Gabby? And then it, it hit me a little bit later. I, I don't. I was on the AP or somewhere, and it's like uh, this is this reality. What the? Was she a uh, blogger? A blogger? Blogger? I don't. I don't even, what was she a reality star or a blogger or did she just travel around in a van? Like what? I don't. I don't know this story. But apparently, this this girl who uh, looks to be allegedly murdered by her boyfriend or I. I don't know. I I haven't been following that story at all, as you can tell. But uh, it took me a hot minute to go like what. Because I couldn't comprehend why a bunch of comic news sites would be doing any videos about some uh, some girl who was murdered. I, I did anyway. I, I I was certain. I was positive. I was about to find a news story that Gabby Rivera was like the new Batman writer, taken on taken over after Williamson. I, I anyway. It, 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 I got off track there a little bit, but uh, the point is, is a lot of these these people are just non factors now. Um, Chuck Winding, remember how pissed everyone was of him? And he's kind of resurged because he gave some statement that he doesn't think Lord of the Rings is a good story or something. He's dissing Lord of the Rings. And so suddenly people are making videos about this guy again, in part because, I mean, he's got a very, I mean, I'm just saying, he has a very punchable face. I think it's the right term. Like he, he does a lot of photos where he's like, whoa, you know, with his mouth open. And he just looks like a, a, a douche. And so he, you know, that, that makes a good video cover. You put him on there and you maybe put some googly eyes and it's like, what crazy thing did this a-hole say? And then you can, you can you know, do some content off that. But in all reality, like, what relevancy does this guy have to comics or, frankly, anything? Uh, it, it's, it's very easy to avoid Chuck Winding. Very easy. If you don't like Bendis, it's hard. You, Bendis is, is part of this industry. Tom King, he's there. That one, he's... he's there he's he's still here he's but even like tom king how how long have we lived with tom king five years now it's not long um same thing with like uh like gabby rivera in this in the spectrum of comics had a less than two-year career right uh i mean max bemis had a little bit over two-year marvel career if that like these, these people are they're they're you, you won't even remember them I mean, it, 10 years from now, nobody will know who these people are. Um, I, I, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. But that's, that's kind of the nature of how a lot of people are getting hired today. The, the editors come in, they hire friends, they hire people who, uh, you know, a friend of theirs says they should work with because whatever, they wrote a really awesome piece for the Atlantic. I, I don't know, something like that. And so they get jobs. But their, um, their overall contribution to comics winds up being two to three years, and they're gone. And I think that should be a comfort to people, although I don't think they, they tend to take it that way. Like, uh, you know, if, if, you were, if you felt really annoyed and irritated at what, uh, you know, Heather Antos was doing over at Marvel, how long was Antos's career for all the noise and the tweets and the craziness that, that she inflicted on comics? How long has she actually been in comics? It, it will it'll be almost no time. Same thing with a bunch of these people. No time. So it goes back to the question, like, why doesn't somebody, like, contact, you know, uh, Louise Simonson, Larry Hama? Why, why, why don't they do that? Well, I mean, hopefully they will, they will start. I think the other factor, though, is do these creators want to come back into comics? In a lot of cases, these creators uh, were paid low. Like, do, do you think Louise Simonson wants to come in and write comics for $70 a page? I don't think so. I, I just, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's funny. I stumbled across a tweet the other day, by the way, from, uh, I think it was from Mags, but it may have been from, um, God, I can't remember the, the woman's name now. I uh, wrote the pervert that remember that book that that was a, a thing that happened back in 2018. Was it? I, I don't know. But anyway, this tweet from this this uh, comic writer is like, "You'll never get rid of me." It's like in 2021. It's like I I, I think I think that uh, I think that we did. I, I think that, or I think you did. Somebody did because I, I don't know. I don't know where you are now, but it's uh, I don't think you're in comics. Let's put it that way. Um, that's uh, <laughs> it's. I, I would love for I would love for there to be 
uh, some of the classic writers back into comics. I think there's some great stories, great talent. I think there's some, some amazing things they could do. I've done videos on this. Um, but I think they, they kind of have to want to, and I'm not sure too many of them do, certainly for the rate that's currently the going rate. I think a lot of the editors, sad to say, don't even remember some of these people. I have an editor that is, is friends with the channel, I would say, um, reaches out, we talk from time to time. And they're like, I was great to learn about, uh, uh, to learn about Glenn. Uh, this guy that we, you know, the editor and writer that we interviewed for the channel is great to learn about Glenn. I never, I never had heard of that guy. It's like, I say, I'm glad, I'm glad the interviews are doing or have a purpose, but, um, it's, it's, it's kind of sad to me that these, these people by and large are getting forgotten. Um, I'm always amazed by how few people know that Jim Shooter wrote comics, not just editor in chief Jim Shooter, but actually wrote comics, a surprising amount. Don't know this. So I think that a lot of this stuff's just getting lost to memory. That's the first problem. And then I think there's another issue where, you know, it's just, uh, it, it, it's, we're, we're just seeing this, this change, uh, go down. And so it, I hope we can see more, but not really expecting to see much more because that's, that's just kind of how the comic industry works, but hopefully hope springs eternal. We'll see some of these great names. I, I, I always bring Anna Sinti and, uh, Louis Simonson. You can bring them on to write X-Men stuff anytime you would like thrilled uh, hell, but not just X-Men, whatever they want. Thanks for listening.